welcome back to the part two of the Minilog SDK tutorial. In this part, we will look into user oscillators and how they work. If you haven't seen the part one, you should actually do so. I have included the link in the comments down below. You should do that firstly, because in the last time we've downloaded the librarian and we have installed our first oscillator. So let's jump right into the code install yourself a source code editor. I'm using the Visual Studio code from Microsoft. That's the only Microsoft piece of software that I'm using apart from GitHub, at least as far as I know. So download it here and then download the C, C++ extension. So let's just start Visual Studio code. There it is. I'll use it in full screen mode so that you can better see what I'm doing. So. Here's the extensions. We will need the C, C++ extension. Install that one and you will be good to go. All right, then let's open the folder. You have hopefully followed the instructions in the last part where I have downloaded the code from the GitHub account from Cork. I have also created myself a fork. Uh, you can also download that fork. I would even suggest it to do so because I have uploaded uh, part of the edits that I've done. So uh, that's the Cork log SDK. And here you can see all the forks that people have made. And there is my fork down here. And why I'm using it is because I have done some changes to the code, which makes it easy, uh, readable and a bit more bulletproof. So there's a lot of comments in here and we will be using those comments. So if you want to, you can just clone that repo here and in a second folder if you want to use it in parallel to the original one and then you can follow uh, all the instructions. So either clone this right now or if you have cloned it before you should go into that folder of the SDK. You should do a git pull to just get my changes that I've just pushed up and you can see mine are already downloaded. So let's go to the platforms mini log part. Okay. So now we do have a few parts in here and we will have a look at those parts from the visual studio code. Okay. So let's open up that uh, folder in here so we can see the whole structure. I will increase the font size so that you can more easily follow what I'm doing. Now let's jump into the Minilog folder and there is the whole SDK for that device. So we do have the delay effects. Here is our waves demo oscillator. There are some include files, the mod effects for modulation and that's the user oscillator part and that's the reverb effects part. In the oscillator part, you will see all the necessary files to build yourself your own oscillators. And there's also some tests included. So we do have the sine oscillator. We do have the square oscillator. We will use one of those to build ourselves a very simple oscillator in a minute. Then the next things you can see here is the make file. The make file includes all the necessary parts to build the executable that's going to be downloaded to the librarian. Then you see the JSON manifest file and that's the, just a dummy file over here that describes what the oscillator is named, uh, how the parameters look like and how many of them are there. And then the project make doesn't include from the make file. So it's being included from the make file. You can see it here. Here is our include statement. So it's just an extension of the make file that's used to specify the name of the project plus some um, sources that are going to be used. And you will see how this works when we look into the oscillators. So now before we jump into the real demo, the waves oscillator, yes, let's just have a look at a, a very simple oscillator that is included in the tests. So let's look into the tests and let's look, for example, into the square oscillator. The structure in here is somewhat different than in the demos. 
So the make file is included in that folder. That's the same make file, it's just a copy. And you can see here the manifest. So the name of the oscillator is square and it doesn't have any, uh, any parameters. And it's the module oscillator. And the project include specifies where the actual oscillator is located. In this case, it's one folder out in the source directory, which is in here. And there it is, that's the square oscillator. And now let's just have a look into what is happening in here. So there's one of the simplest oscillators that you can build. It is a list of callbacks. So we do have a callback called oscillator init that is being executed once per voice when the oscillator is loaded. Then we have the actual oscillator cycle that is being called multiple times for each oscillator and that is used for uh, filling up a buffer that's located over here at yn and the buffer has the size of so many frames. Okay, so that's the actual synthesis that is being done and we will look into this one in a bit more depth in a second. Then you have uh, the oscillator node on. So when the user is pressing one of the keys on the keyboard, on the musical keyboard, in our case, this only resets the oscillator wave to its zero position. Next, we have the oscillator node off event. This is being triggered when a user lets go of a key on the keyboard. In this case, we don't do anything in here. If you see something like that, void and then a params name like here, you see that's a, it's actually an argument from the function call. And then it's, it's like void and params, it looks strange, but that's just a way to make the compiler shut up with warnings because otherwise you will get a warning that you haven't used the parameters in here. So that's just a hint to the compiler that the params are being used. Next we have the oscillator parameters event. This is being called when the user is setting a program edit. So this would be the six parameters that you can actually create uh, with a manifest file. If you remember, there is this manifest file, JSON file, and there's this number of parameters and it's to set to zero. So we don't have any of these right now, but if there would be any, they could be set down here. So when a user sets one of those parameters, you would get a call back and this function would be called. And here you could be then setting all of those parameters. This is be also being called when the oscillator shape and the oscillator shift shape are being set by the user. So shape, that's the button just on the right of the type on the multi-engine. And shift shape means that you, when you press the shift button and then turn the shape, this is going to get called. So for the oscillator at hand in here, so for the square oscillator, this is changing the duty cycle and the angle of the oscillator. Let's not talk about this right now, since this is going to be more important later when we talk about oscillator waveforms. So with this little knowledge, let's just create a super simple synth. Let's call it the silent. No pun intended. Just create a copy of the square folder and put it in here. So now we have a copy. Let's rename it. Let's call it silent. And let's create a copy of the square. But let's put it in here. I don't like the separation of the source file from the folder. And let's rename it again to silent. 
Okay, so now we have our structure for our new oscillator. What we need to do is change the project name. Let's call it silent. Oops. And since it's in the same directory right now, let's just give it the correct file name. All right, let's save it. Let's add the manifest JSON file or let's correct it. It's going to be the platform minilog on the oscillator module. The API that we are expecting from the synthesizer is 1.0. The device ID and program ID have to stay the same. Let's just give it the version 1.0 and let's just name it silent. All right, let's save it. Now let's go to the silent CPP. So since this is going to be a very simple synthesizer, we do not need any state. So let's just delete those few lines in here. We probably should have our in init function. Uh, and for the compiler to not complain, let's just put in these. Hints for the compiler. And then we will have a very simple oscillator cycle. Let's just delete everything from here to here. The only thing that we will be doing in this oscillator is just writing zeros to the buffer with the oscillator cycle event. The synthesizer is running at 48 kilohertz and the oscillator cycle is being called multiple times per second. It's called with a buffer. The buffer is located at that address. So this is a pointer in C. So if you're not familiar with pointers, you should actually go and, uh, and do that right now. Make yourself familiar with, with pointers because we're gonna use them a lot of times. As you can see here, that's the buffer address. The call itself gets three parameters. The first piece in here is a uh, parameter structure that we will have a look at uh, in the next synth that we will be doing. Then there is a pointer to four byte ints. So it's a pointer to a 32-bit structure. And the buffer itself has got a size and the size is being handed over to us in the frames variable, which gives us the amount of frames that there will be in the buffer. The part of the code that we've copied from the square oscillator is of course creating a square. Actually, it's a path width modulated square. So we will be just uh, taking this out for our super simple, super quiet synth. And the only thing that we will be doing is just writing zeros into the buffer. So if you're not familiar with the syntax here, that's a for loop that is going from uh, from y until that variable y reaches uh, the address of the end of the buffer. And so this is going to be repeated multiple times. And the buffer pointer that's pointing to the current sample is being increased after. So that's the y plus plus after the zero is being written into the buffer. So that's a handy notation in C that you increase the value after you have written the zero into the buffer. After that, the synthesizer has been increasing the phase, but we will not be using this since our silent is a very simple synthesizer. And we will also will not be using this here. We will not be using any of those callbacks. All right. So this is now our very simple silent oscillator. It just has two callbacks, one for the initialization of the oscillator and one for the cycle of the oscillator. Basically, we wouldn't even need that init callback, but I have left it in here 
for the sake of transparency. So we do have an init call and we do have a cycle call. And in the cycle call, the only thing that we are doing is just writing zeros into that buffer. We do not take care of parameters. We do not take care of pitch. Um, so the only thing that we're doing is just writing zeros in here. This callback is actually necessary since the buffer that you get handed might, might not contain zeros when, when, you're, when you're getting it. So are you actually obliged to write something in there if not, you might get noises uh, and so on. And if you're actually tried out and do not write anything in there, you will hear uh, a small saw wave running. So now this is our basic silent. Let's just go and build it. So let's go to our console. So let's go into the oscillator. It's in tests. There it is, the silent. All right, and let's do a make. And it built nicely. So now let's just push it to our synthesizer. For this, as you remember, I'm just opening up my librarian. In the meantime, I'm searching for the output. There's our unit file. And by the way, before we push it, that's basically just a zip file that is containing the executable. Let's just unzip it so you can see. So it created a folder. So let's go in there. It's just containing the actual payload, which is a binary, which is now just 80 bytes big. So with our space of 32 kilobytes, we can load quite a few of these super simple synthesizers. Now let's look into the manifest file. It's just being copied from our project. And let's switch to the user oscillators in the librarian. Let's drag ours down. Now let's push it to the synthesizer. There it is. And it's super silent. This concludes the second part of our SDK tutorial. In the next episode, we will look into the square oscillator. See you then.